the toughest job in town, but I'm sure I'd find other things far more difficult. So I'm ditching my regular job and trying something completely different. This is my work experience. And this week, I'm a fisherman. In a few days' time, I'd be going out to sea as a commercial trawlerman from the pretty Devon port of Brixham. But before I was allowed to dip a toe in the water, I had to go along to Milford Haven Leisure Centre, and I was already worried. Any job we ought to do a mandatory survival course sets my alarm bells ringing. Of course, due to Greg, had spent more time at sea than the Mary Rose, and knew more about staying alive than the Bee Gees. Okay, the road, what fishing experience do you have to date? Rock pooling. Rock pooling. <laughs> and familiarity with boats, what, what's your experience with boats? Car ferry. You could fit everything I knew about sea fishing on a clam's wang, but Captain Greg's eye immediately put me at ease. The death rate in the industry is horrendous. If you did a full career in the commercial fishing industry, you've got a 1 in 14 chance of drowning at sea. 1 in 14 chance of drowning. Correct. So you've decided to do the most dangerous job in the UK. I wondered whether Captain Greg Sy's dinner party banter needed a bit of work. Okay, what I'm going to talk about now is the things that are going to kill you. A cross between Popeye and Nostradamus, Greg was a right old Popadamus. And his chirpy death presentation was giving me a real lift. Well, the biggest killer in the industry is cold water shock. If you suddenly fall into cold water when you're not expecting it, your brain becomes disconnected from your nervous system. You lose the ability to hold your breath. You lose the ability to swim. You're buggered, you're going to drown. And there's nothing you can do about it. Papadamus' fun-packed course got even grimmer. Apparently my boat could sink and I'd find myself all alone in a life raft. Luckily he had everything I'd need to make my survival cruise more memorable. It was like a North Korean party bag with survival canapes. Well you call it food, I would stick legs on it and use it as a very small table. <laughs> Walkie talkies. Who are you going to talk to? My agent. They won't get you out of there. A little tub. To remove any excess water from the life raft, they're also for collecting any liquids. Or solids. And I suppose solids as well, yeah. Bucket and chuck it. Bucket and chuck it. Seems odd when you're in a survival situation on a life raft, I've cast phrases. <laughs> it even had a little thing to stop the boat that saved you from the sinking boat from sinking. You just bung that in a hole in the raft. Exactly. And then there's a full-size puncture repair kit with glue and everything else. But you need to have a dry area to do that. Is that quite hard when we're in the middle of the sea? Yes, very hard. The next thing we look at, which should probably be of great interest to you... Lowe's. Suicide pills. Not quite. Seasick tablets. I have never set foot on a boat in my life without being seasick. And I get involved with a fish and you might not be seasick. If I'm really sick, will they turn back? No. Even if I'm throwing up everything I've got in me, I'm like a little... Evaporating leaf. It ain't gonna happen. Bastards. <laughs> I get seasick listening to Brian Ferry, so this was really bad news. But there was no time to dwell on it. Okay, so here we have a survival suit. Do you have to be able to put this on together with a life jacket in less than two minutes? Go. If I was going to be allowed out to sea, I had to pass the practical elements of Papadamus' survival extravaganza. Get the hood on. One minute. your survival time. Inside there, you maybe last a week in sea temperatures we've got now. I don't want to spend a week in this though. Do you want to live? I want to live this quality of life as well. <laughs> I hoped I'd never have to use that live-in portaloo for real, but I'd passed the first stage of the course. As we moved to the pool for the final tests, I could tell Papadamus was going to push me to my limit. You're going to make an entry into the water, hold the jacket down, pitch your nose to stop the water going up your nose and into your head. For similar reasons, you don't want cold water entering any other holes in your body. So when you're stepping off, clench your cheeks. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We've got one of those little black screens. <laughs> okay, off you go. My heart was pounding like a coked up hamster. Okay, you said? Deep breath. 
Keep breathing. Don't look down. Don't look down. Yeah. Thomas was determined to make me fail. He'd already thrown me in at the deep end, but there was more deep and end to come. Hopefully this is all you'll ever see of a life raft, the outside canister. If I'd proved I could abandon ship, provided it was one foot tall and by a heated swimming pool. To my final test, I had to leap from the side and climb into a life raft. In this instance, I'm your captain. You wait till I tell you to abandon ship. Okay, I'll be waiting for the last possible moment. Okay. What are you going to do to it? We'll see. Go on, get over there. The weather's bad and we're sinking. Get ready to abandon ship. Unlike the sea, the pool was as calm and still as a monk's wife runs. So Greg hit me with ice cold water. This was pure adrenaline fueled insanity. Abandon ship. Gale. Come on, Gale. Get there. Quick as you can. It's still rough. It's still cold. It's still wet. Well done. <laughs> I was now legally entitled to go fishing, but after Greg's PowerPoint charts of doom and death drills, I was more convinced than ever I didn't want to. When I arrived this morning, my biggest concern was seasickness. But after today, I'm literally a hundred percent sure I'm gonna die. I left Greg handing out leaflets on life expectancy at a children's party. I scampy down to Brixham ready for some fishing. Or as Greg had called it, dying. Head of the local fishing cooperative, Barry, had kindly agreed to let me die on one of the trawlers in his group. Well, this feels like a sub prison sentence. <laughs> but before I did anything, Barry treated me to a trip to the fish market. He told me to keep a close eye on the auctioneers and the bidding. I had no idea what my eyes were listening to, or why Barry brought me here, until he dropped a bombshell. This is the most important bit. You always get the salad, and you've got to get as much money for your product. You get this wrong, and then you don't get paid zero. Bollocks. Things were getting shitter by the minute. Not only was I going to die at sea, but now I'd have to sell all the fish when I got back. I'm feeling very out of my depth. I didn't expect to be four minutes through from catching a fish to coming to a marketplace at auction and trying to sell. Selling really is not my forte. And it's uh, a little bit of a different spin. I'm going out on that boat. Any fish I'd bring back to auction would be caught from a boat called the Jerry Ann Sea. Barry took me to meet its skipper, Richard. We found him on the side bit, mending nets with a thing. At just 14 years of age, Richard was living proof of how hard fishing is. Cheers, Rich. You're all ready. I'm with you. <laughs> Don't look me up and down like that. <laughs> I'd only just met him, but I could tell young Richard was the kind of guy who'd look after me if I got seasick. Do you turn back for people if they're really bad? No. You'll be staying with us for the day. Got a nice big bucket. <laughs> you make the noises, I laugh. <laughs> The little scamp told me to go away and come back at 4.30 next morning ready to go fishing. But like a man with hemorrhoids about to go pony trekking, I was having second thoughts. Dangerous things happen. 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 Next morning, I drafted my will and downed enough seasickness pills to kill a pilot whale and hurried down the docks for our 4.30 departure. But I can't have been as keen to die as I thought because I arrived at 4.36. You failed your first mission. I know. I know. I'm here. I'm ready to go, though. Right. Let's get on the boat. On the boat. On the boat. On the boat. While Skipper Richard and Deckhand John took us out to sea, I expected to vomit myself inside out. But as we left harbour, my inside stayed inside in. Weather-wise, I'd lucked out. Massively relieved. It's flatter than my missus's island boy. <laughs> it's the old fisherman's band there. It's flatter than my missus's island boy. 
Between them, Richard and Big John had seen more fish than Pingu's potty and knew where to find them. The sun was coming up and I was still alive, but as a new boy, it was clear I was last in the pecking order. Auntie Sam, how you text you, kid? What do I need to cut? You have your hand off. Well... trapped on board, and I knew exactly how that felt. It's just got five in the morning, it's not my usual day, I have to say. Unlike me, Freddy was free to go, because like a lobster who's been totally thermidored, I wasn't going anywhere. By 5.30am we reached our first fishing ground. The boys leapt into action like salmon, while I stood on the side like a lemon wedge. Yeah, a little bit more, then we're gonna take the weight on the other road. Right there. Stop, stop, stop. The closest I've come to manual work is reading the instructions on my massage chair. Lift that up, do that up. Keep going till it goes tight. Yeah. Now undo it. Undo it? Yeah. Ready? Your fingers out of any more food. out for three hours, I suggested we go home to bed and come back later, but Richard was the right old taskmaster. Uh, if you could have a clean up around the boat, Aww. wash all the weed and shit and everything over the side, and hose it down the starboard side on the bow. Starboard side starboard on the bow? Side. Which one's starboard? Port. Starboard. Right. Port? Port. Yeah, what's, are we going to remember it from doing that? Red port, you must... Stick the port back in there, don't you, when you're out? Yeah, but I don't always use my left hand to do it. What if I use my right hand to drink port? It's the colour. Port you drink is red, some port on the boat is red. What do you mean port on the boat is red? The light on the left hand side is red. What's that got to do with my left hand? Nothing. Right. No, left. <laughs> Stern to the back. Yeah. Bow's at the front. Bow is at the front. Bow. Oh, you bow, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's before, right? Uh, Every time you see me. Yeah, okay. I'm the skipper, you're the deck of the You're the skipper, I'm the deck of the Yeah, we ain't no doubt yeah. about that. I was as confused as a footballer trying to feed bread to a toilet duck, but Richard insisted I do his dirty work. Hey Richard, give me these kind of menial things to do to, to break me down, because I'm the lowest of the low, the decky learner. This feels like a totally pointless task. It's going to be absolutely filthy again in seconds. Today, where the sea is totally calm, I'm losing my balance, I'm hitting my head. If this was rough, it would be absolutely horrific. Like an angle worm, I was having to start at the bottom and work my way up. Richard put the sea into bossy, the fish into a fishers, and the dick into Richard. He was a right old bossy fish dick. Don't touch it, are you smudging the inside? <laughs> Shady, can't hear me. Let's see. Rich! Rich! You're a proper dick! You're a proper dickhead, yeah? Talk about that! If only I could hear what he was saying. Next, Bossy Fishstick demanded his breakfast. He had me waiting on him hand and foot and sausage. Should never prick sausages. Never prick sausages. Oh. Is that what your mother taught you? The fat helps him. Cooks the meat. You stick to fish, all right? I don't know where around the sausage. At the bottom of the food chain here, it goes Richard, he's the captain, John, he's the deckhand, then fish, then there's the seagulls, then it's me. There's yours, all right? There's captain's, there's half of one there. There's John's, the deckhand sausage, and then that little crusty bit there is for more the cabin boy. Yeah? That's, is that how it works? That's, I'm really proud. 
Time flies when you're having fun. And what felt like four years later, it was time to bring in the nets. And Bossy Fishstick was worried about the hole. Yesterday was poor. It was break even or just below break even. It was a long break even since it happened. And when you thought we hadn't much of time, you've turned to fishing around and slowly. was nervous, he was after money fish, and they don't exist. But it did explain why he'd seen him trying to get 20 haddock from a cash point the night before. I have no idea quite what to expect. So I'm just saying that the more fish there are, the messier it's going to be. Equally, the more fish there are, the more we get paid. It's been quite a surprise to learn that you can slog your guts out all day and come home with nothing. It's not many jobs like that. If the nets came up empty, all the sausage cooking, shit hosing, death risking, seagull saving could be for nothing. There's a lot of moving bits and heavy cranking and things going on. It's a dangerous environment. Yeah. You get no idea if something touches you when it shouldn't touch you. Get out of the way. It's a good rule in life, that is. Yeah. Something's touching you that shouldn't be touching you. Especially in a pot. <laughs> Fingers near a lot of cranking. I don't like fingers and cranking put together. That's me a Welsh saying. As our first haul came in, we all hoped to see money fish, or at least a mermaid with some gift tokens. But either way, our loot was being looted. I tell you what, if we did have any fish in there, we're not going to have any by the time those seagulls are finished. We must have some in there. Lots that a good sign? It's a 50 50 sign. We're going to dine in there, it's incredible. We weren't sure it was the high value stuff we were looking for, but the nets were full. I hadn't seen that many fish since Bossy Fish Dick made me tip out his pajamas. Is that a lot? That is better than the whole day's fishing yesterday. That's how up down it is. So we just got to hope now that we can keep it going. It's a very odd thing. I'm very ambivalent about it. On the one hand, the fishermen, they earn a living. But it's a sort of tragic sight as well to see all these fish on top of each other in a fairly undignified state. They've spent all their life waiting for today. I'm sure they have. I'm sure this feels like the big we day for them. We were so pleased it was us in the corner and no one else. Kafishting. The fish seals were ringing with money fish. I haven't seen that many glassy-eyed corpses since the BBC Wales Christmas party. So what, what are these, Richard? They're lemon soles. Lemon sole. That's what the money is. That's uh, good money fish. That's what we're fishing for. Lemon soles and dories. That's a John Dory. But I do have to say, lemon soles are damn hard to pick up. So they've got some handles. So if you put your thumb over the handle, you pick them up easily. It's the eyes. Oh, is that what they are? The eyes, they're not the windows to the soul, they're handles to the fish basket. It's a weaver fish, right? See the black spines on his back? Yeah. Don't poke them. You could right. die. Really? Yeah, you yeah. could do, yeah, if you're allergic. Shit. Yeah. Have you stabbed yourself with one? Yes. You have? You've stabbed yourself with a weaver fish? It was only my size when you did it, that's the swelling. <laughs> Amongst the money fish, there was some small change. Too small to land, by law we had to throw them back. Oh, look at that! It's a little oh. fish with a starfish friend! I'm going to try and release the two of them. Yeah. I'm hoping they're going to ride off into the sunset like Butch and Sundance. The hungry seabirds had us surrounded, but Butch, Haddocky and the starfish kid prepared to make their escape. It's a bit like Zulu. The odds are stacked against you. So you're going to swim, my little friends. Swim. Don't look up. Do not look up. Just go for it. My two young friends hadn't made it. I was gutted. I felt like my insides had been ripped out. Which, ironically, was exactly what Bossy wanted me to do to the rest of the fish. If I was going to be of any use, I had to toughen up and grow some pollocks. Hold them by the handles. Put it across. Lift it all out. Cut it off. 
Bossy fist stick and Big John would tap hands at gutting, but I was left floundering. The fish were slimier than Peter Stringfellow in a sardine skin mankini. Oh. scored our catch. Oddly, fish that looked like a dog's dinner wouldn't sell at auction, while ones that looked like the dog's bollocks would, so we laid them out nice on ice. To be sure we got the best price when I got to market, I'd also have to get to grips with selling my soul. Welcome to Rod Gilbert's slightly inappropriate cookery show. If you're cooking this fish, not sure if it's dog soul or lemon soul, just pop it against you like that. If you can do that with it, that's dog soul, your lemon soul, however, Easy way to tell the difference. I remember that. <laughs> remember that if you've got your soul at home. It was only 11 a.m. and our second hall was in. Morka fish jig. Maybe it wouldn't all be for nothing after all. I was moving from decky learner to a learned decky. That's the second time I've seen it, but it's still impressive. I am a completely different person from the one that got on this boat. So I really feel like I know what I'm looking at. I know what we're going to do with it. Nice. Fun. Lemon. That is a John Dory, perfectly nice one. You sir, go away, grow up, come back in a few years. Less than halfway through the fishing and I was already totally sea bust. I smelt like a marine latrine and was greasier than a herring's headrest. Hey, what? Well, I've kept some land, mate. You are? But despite still being all at sea, I wasn't feeling all at sea anymore. Oh. Ah. All right, Captain. Good job, he's got a nice day, that's all I say. As I spoilt my hungry seamen with tarts, I finally felt like one of the crew. Well, cheers. 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 Oh, good fishing. Good company. Yeah. May the next hole be favourable. So the next hole will be our last. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might just have to have one more because she was late this morning. Terribly late when I, when I rocked up at 4.36. So late! I was now a cog in a well-oiled machine, eating at the captain's table. He even showed me his favourite toy. I've invented a seagull stare. <laughs> I'm serious. That's reflex. Serious high-tech work. Yeah, that is high-tech. It doesn't harm them. How confident are you that your seagull stare works? I read 100%. 100%. Yeah. Alright. This was your cherry break. You know, you've had your eye on it. I'm going to put that on the front. Have you got the faith? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> there was no way the greedy gullers would resist my cherry top temptress. Welcome to the Great British Beak Off. Come on, seagulls! Come on! It's a man yellow! If we were in Cardiff City Centre, that would be pestered by the thing, because we don't know what you're going to say. But are there any of these seagull scarers in Cardiff City Centre? I saw an opportunity to fast track a promotion. Sod decky learner, I had my eyes on the top prize. Let's make this interesting. I'll play you for the hat. Who gets to captain this boat? If I win, I take over the boat. If you win, you get to wear the hat. This was mutiny on the bakewell tart. Come on, seagulls! This was the scarer! How's it working? Oh, Mary Berry. Mutiny on the bakewell had failed. But I decided to up the anchovy. Because if just one girl stuck his beak into my fishy treat, I could take over, turn us round, and head for home. That's it, the seagull scare, mate. 
Yeah. It's infallible. It is infallible. It's incredible. I wear this hat with pride. With Captain Fistic safely at the helm, our final haul was upon us, and it was more Kafishchik. Sort them, gut them, wash them, store them, I knew the routine by now, it was just a bloody endurance test. But after three good hauls, at least we were in with a chance of making some money at the auction. <laughs> The last basket of fish going down the pot of ice. That's it. Fishing part is done. Stop the clocks. A mere 16 hour shift. Our nets were up for good. All that remained was the long commute home. And apart from some seagull congestion, the traffic wasn't too bad. Captain Fishstick joined me on the bow and rubbed my aching nipples, I felt king of the world woo-hoo. We'd done what we could fishing-wise, now it was down to me in the auction to sell what I could fish-wise. All oh, today has been huge graft, total uncertainty, to lie here and watch dolphins as we go home. I have to say, for one day only, I don't care what I get paid. I'm taking that as my paycheck. We left at 5 a.m. this morning. It's getting on for 9 o'clock at night now. That is a long day. Certainly the next time I'm tacking into a fish and chips and I'll spare a thought people who are out here all day. Possibly all night. Possibly without getting any money for it. Rain, come shine, come wind, snow. It's not like many other jobs. Your family think about your fishing. They hate it. They hate it. Uh. <laughs> well, that would have been a hell of a moment for you to slide over this over the end. Beautiful sunset, John goes over the side. <laughs> I'm away an awful lot. I'll be here a lot more than I'm at home, and you know, I miss a lot of my kids growing up. Oh, we're in now, I should be straight to bed. I'll be up again at half past three in the morning, and I'll be out doing it all again. And I'll be doing that for the next six days. Okay, so you'll do six days, I'll go home for a sort of day and a half, come back and do it all again. Yeah. All year. All year. I don't suppose it is weather every day. If I did every day, I wouldn't mind it quite as much. As we bobbed back into Brixham, I was completely lobstered, but we still had to unload all the ruddy fish. And as our catch was taken off to market, I said goodbye to my wonderful partners in Brine. Thanks very much for having me. It's different, wasn't it? Hard day. What would you estimate for a decky learner like me from that day? Just as a guess, I know we won't know till tomorrow, till then we've sold the stuff in the auction. If you had 10% on that, I reckon you'll get around about 70 quid. 70 quid for around, today? I reckon. 70 we'll quid. see how well you do at the auction. Yeah, the dolphins. Can I uh, can I have that memory? Or are you going to take that off? No, no, are you going to take out my wages? No, you can have the dolphins. <laughs> I can have it. I can have, keep the memory. Can I? In just five hours, they'd be doing it all again, and I certainly wouldn't be joining them. But 6 a.m. next morning, I owed it to them to get to market and get the best price I could for our catch. Look at this fish now. It feels very strange. I feel really protective of it. And I really want to get the best price I can for this. I've been on a bloody boat. I have done it, and that's mine. These traders have come from all over the country to buy here today, and if they want it, they're going to have to pay for it. As our auction approached, Barry gave me some last-minute tips. 
Just remember, these are here to get this from you on that one. Lowest price they can. Lowest price they can. Alright, let's start with the right one. No, alright, I'll see you in a bit. Not that right one, bro. Start with the Terry and C. We saved the best to the last, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, beautiful. We worked hard yesterday. 17 bloody hours on a shitty trawler. You punched in here from London. How have you even been on a bloody boat? Come on, three pound. Yeah, I'll give you a three pound. I've been desperate not to let my team down, and I wasn't. I was converting all the money fish into money money. And more importantly, not getting mugged by the bidding sharks. Jump on the white boat. A mix of haddock there. Fantastic monkfish. Beautiful mix from stamps and lemons. What a mix. Come on, I caught these with my fair hand. This I've survived. What's more, we'd had a good day, and I'd have earned about 70 quid. But for a decky learner, the figures made you seasick. 18 hours at sea, a 1 in 14 chance of drowning, and on a bad day, you wouldn't even make enough to get yourself fish and chips. If you wanted mushy peas, you'd have to do overtime. Yeah, he's bidding from China there, big call from China, bidding on five mackerel. 